Hi, good morning, and welcome to lecture 16 of quantum physics for non physicists. And today is the 5th of November. Uh, and we will continue talking about the density matrix formalism. So we're trying to model uncertainty. We'll recap all the definitions we came up with last time. And now we'll mostly see examples to try to illustrate uh, the different aspects of density matrices. So we'll see the difference between a superposition and a mixture. Uh, and we'll also see what happens when you have a global entangled state, what happens to the uh, local versions of the state. In terms of housekeeping, I think Nuri already told you that there will be a survey we'll send out tomorrow, just a Google form to uh, fill in, let us know how we're doing with the lecture and what else you'd like to see covered. Uh, and then I will, at the end of this lecture, I'll kind of briefly go over what courses there exist in quantum, quantum stuff in general uh, in the spring semester at ETH, so that um, I'm considering whether to give a continuation of this course or not, so I'll ask for your opinion then. Okay, uh, just one more thing before, before we start. If, if someone is watching the election results and there's some new developments, please write it on the chat. Okay, so today we don't have an analogy of my own, but we have debunking of an analogy that I've been waiting a long time to do. This is a meme that has been going around um, on social media by someone who doesn't understand uh, neither coronavirus, nor how memes work, nor um, uh, superpositions and quantum physics. So it says, we're all Schrodinger's virus now. We cannot test test it, so we don't know if we have the virus or not. So we have to act as if we have it, so we don't spread it to others. Fair enough. We have to act as if we don't have it, because then uh, we're not immune. Therefore, we both have and don't have the virus, thus Schrodinger's virus. And it has a... a a special note at the end saying, if you don't understand this joke, you're never allowed to talk about science again. Um, so, if you have friends who've posted this kind of thing, you, I will now give you the tools to, um, to, to tell them how wrong they are, okay? So, we will see examples of differences between superpositions and probabilistic mix mixtures, and then at the end we can come back to this example. Very good, so let's just recap what we did. So we wanted to model general situations where there could be some sort of quantum states. We don't know what or why the, he has this behavior yet, doesn't matter, it can be applied to many cases. So something will come out of it, and then we are this experimentalist and we can either apply measurements or let the state evolve and then apply measurements. So we want to kind of probe this physical system that is coming out of it. And, and let's assume that we know that with probability pi, this machine produces a state um, psi i. And then what we were wondering is that if there's a way to represent the state that is sufficient to get uh, you know, all the operational behavior that we can see by observing the system, meaning all the measure, measurement statistics and the evolution and then measurement statistics of the state. And then we go to, to this object, which was a density matrix, right? Which is just a sum of the matrix version of, of the state, right? So we just have the state as a cat and multiply it by a bra, so we get the matrix. And then you take the average weight of all these different uh, possibilities, uh, the average, yeah, the weighted average, sorry. Okay, now note that this is kind of a compression of this initial object. And as such, we'll lose some information, which we'll talk about in a moment. But we saw that this object is sufficient to give us the statistics for a local measurement. So we saw that the probability of getting some outcome x when we measure this, uh, this situation is given just by the trace of the projector corresponding to the outcome and uh, the density matrix, right? Which was a generalization for what happens on, for uh, a pure state when we know exactly which psi i we have. It was given by this, uh, the Born rule which we saw can be written in this sense, right? There is the state, uh, there is the projector, and there is the state in the matrix version. And then for the evolution, we saw that uh, in order to evolve it under some physical evolution represented by unitary U, we need to put, we need to kind of conjugate um, the density matrix with the two forms with the unitary, so unitary on one side and the transpose conjugate on the other, right? Uh, 
which is a generalization of just having a pure state evolving, where just put u in the state. Good. And then on the one example we saw yesterday, we saw that when we, when we use this representation of the density matrix, we lose some information about, um, about maybe details of this machine, about how this, this situation here was created. And the example we saw was saw a machine that can create our state zero or one with probability one half each. And we saw that the density matrix corresponding to this was just one half, zero, zero plus one, one which is exactly the identity divided by two, it's this matrix here. But then we saw, oh, what if we have a different machine that either produces states plus or minus with probability one half? Well, then we saw that if you do the math, then it ends up being exactly the same, the same density matrix, which means that we cannot distinguish uh, one situation from the other, one setting from the other through only local measurements in local evolution. Okay. So now we'll see an example of a superposition versus uh, a mixture and how we can distinguish them. So we want to see superposition versus mixture. Okay, so let's just take a qubit in this example. And let's just say the zero is same as like the cat, cat being alive or you're not infected with corona, coronavirus. And one is dead or you're infected. Okay. And let's look first at the case of a superposition of these two situations. So this is something we saw before. We can create the state one over square root of two of zero plus one. Okay. Which we saw in this example a long time ago of the Schrodinger's cat, how this can be created uh, by correlating it with some quantum system that is in a superposition, right? If the particle hits up, it hits some capsule where I kept a bit of coronavirus, for example. And then you, you get correlated with this and you're infected. So in the global state can be compressed to this thing. It doesn't matter, that's just for the analogy later. So we have this state, so let's just write what the density matrix is corresponding to this state. Well, there's only one possibility with probability one is this. So what is this? So it's gonna be one over two of zero plus one, zero plus one. Okay, which is just four terms, so we get zero, zero, plus zero, one, plus one, zero, plus one, one. Okay, and if we, if we write this in the matrix form, it looks like this, right? It's a two by two matrix. And by the way, something we can look at is see what row squared is. And again, so look, we could do it either in, by multiplying the two matrices together, or we can do it in direct notation in whatever basis is more convenient. So it's a matter of like gaining some intuition for which way it would be easier. But in this case, we can say, well, it's plus plus. plus plus, okay. But we know that this is gonna be an inner product that's one. So that's just plus plus, so that's row. And as we saw before, this is kind of an indicative that it be, of it being a pure state. Of course, in this case, we already knew it was a pure state because we started from here saying, well, it's just one state. But you could have been given just, um, the density matrix and you don't know yet if it's pure of mix just by looking at it. So what one, one way, one easy way to do it is to just multiply it by itself and see if you get again the same matrix, then it's a pure state and then it's the match of diagonalizing it and finding uh, what state it corresponds to. Good, so now let's see, let's try to measure it. So one thing we do is 
do a measurement. Measure. Oh. Okay, and first let's measure in this Z basis. And we've done this before, right? The, probab the probability of getting zero for the state rule is going to be trace of the projector into zero times rho. And again, so either we can write rho in the direct notation. This is one option. Let's do it now. Trace of zero, zero, plus, plus. And then you'd have to solve this in this way. But another way to do it is to just replace the two matrices by what they are. So it's kind of easier to do in this case because it's just a qubit. And then you have here um, 1 over 2, 1, 1, 1, 1. And th this matrix is very easy to multiply by the other. So we just get 1 half because the trace is linear, trace of 1, 0, 0, 0. Right. And the trace, remember, is just the sum of the diagonal elements, which is the same as uh, kind of sandwiching with cats and brass from a given basis, but corresponds to just the sum of diagonal elements. So that's 1 plus 0 is 1, so you get 1 half. And obviously, the probability of getting 1 is going to be the same because it's 1 minus this. OK, so indeed, like there's a basis if we measure the cat in the dead alive basis um, with probability one half, we get dead and with probability one half, we get alive. But now let's see what happens if you measure in the X basis. So this is the basis plus minus. And you can expect what happens because we know that probability of getting plus going to be the trace of plus. Uh, is it not 1 over square root of 2? No, because I look. Um, so it's 1 square root of 2 here. But then I multiply it by itself. So I've got two of these terms. So I've got 1 over 2 overall, right? Because it's 1 over square root of 2 times 1 over square root of 2. So here it's 1 over uh, 2. Got it. So here, that, there's where it is. OK. Good. Uh, all right, so you get this. And this one is easier to do in direct notation because you know it's the same states, right? This is 1. So that's just a trace of this, which is 1, right? Because it's a, it's a pure state. Good, and because you can just look at the matrix and, and, and like come here and send this and this. Good. Which is of course one minus the probability of getting minus. Okay. So just like we saw before when we were looking only at the, at these probabilities for the state plus, for the pure state plus here, it's, it's exactly the same. We're just doing it in the matrix representation. Um, now, another thing we can do is try to evolve the state. And let's do a specific evolution. Let's say that u equals the Hadamard gauge. If you remember, it was on the square root of 2 of 1, 1, 1, one uh, minus 1. And what it did was to map 0 to plus and vice versa and map 1 to Minus. Yeah, remember this gate from lectures one and two? There you go. So then we have rho goes to u rho u dagger. Okay. So that's h plus plus h dagger, but h dagger is just h. That's just a property of this specific gate. It's not true for unitaries in general, but in this one, if you transpose and conjugate that, you get the same gate again. 
and we know that this is zero. This is just the same. This is going to be zero there. So we get zero, zero. Which means what? Well, there was one transformation that we could have done in this, um, in this stage that brings us back to zero, which could be the cat being alive or you not being infected, which as you can imagine is, is something you'd be very hard pressed to do uh, in real life to a person. Now let's compare this to the mixture. So we had, we did all this with a superposition. Now we compare it to the mixture case. Whereas with probability one half, I'm dead, and with probability one half, I'm alive. So this plus one half of one one, which as we saw, this is this matrix one one zero zero. So we can compare to the other one. The other one had this off diagonal terms. Uh, here, here it was one and one, and now this one is completely diagonal. Okay, which you can write as one half times the identity. Okay, so for starters, we can do the same as we did before. So let's do, suppose we're just given this matrix and you don't know if it's a pure state or not, then okay, let's do this squared. But this is just one half of the identity times one half of the identity, which is what? Well, it's one quarter times the identity, which is not the initial state. So we know that this state must be mixed. Okay. A pure state is one that has only one component. If it has more than one, we say it's mixed and it comes from the idea of a probabilistic mixture. Okay, so now we measure. And so what's the probability of getting zero with this new state again, trace of zero zero rho tilde, but this is one half trace of zero zero times the identity, right? I just took the one half out of the trace, and this we know um, I mean it's just the trace of zero zero, which is one. It's going to be the trace of this matrix, one, zero, zero, zero. So you get one half. Good. So, which was exactly the same as before, right? So if you measure in this basis, you get exactly the same outcome as for our superposition state to get one half. Good. But what if we measure in the other basis? So let's just write it down. There's a different color. So this was in the Z basis. What happens if you measure in the X basis? Well, then the probability of getting plus is trace of plus times root tilde. But again, this is just one half trace of uh, plus times the identity, right? Which is again, just one half, which is different from what happened if you had the superposition, right? So it, this is kind of the, this is the one of the ways of defining a pure state, which is if you have a pure state, then there is one basis you can measure in that you always get one outcome with certainty. If it's a mixed state, then you cannot do this, right? So it doesn't matter which basis you got, then you, you here, in this case, it's an extreme one because it's fully mixed. Uh, it's a uniform distribution. So you really get one half, one half. Yep. And what happens if we evolve it? Let's think of any evolution. So rho tilde goes to you, rho tilde, your dagger. In this case, 
it is just you, one half of the identity, your dagger. But that's just one half of you, your dagger. And because you, you is a unitary, that's just your identity, right? So not all cases are so extreme. Of course, if you have a more complicated mixture, it can actually evolve and change. But this is an extreme example to see that, well, the evolved state is really different. So even if you put the Hadamard here, you cannot bring it back to the zero state, right? If you have a cat in a superposition of being alive and dead, and you have uh, enough quantum control over the state of the cat, you can reverse it back to zero. But if it's in a probabilistic mixture, this means that like this superposition is lost somewhere in the environment and you only have access to the cat, then there's no way you can bring it back to being alive. Yeah. With certainty. So this is, so insights from this example. Is that for pure states, One, there is a basis uh, measurement with where the outcome is certain. Okay, and and here is just a basis. You know, this state is normalized, so you can pick just any orthonormal basis of which this is one of the elements. Right, like before our state was, um, our state was plus, so you just pick the basis plus minus to measure in, and then we know that we have a certain outcome. And two, there is a unitary evolution that can take psi to zero because it's just a, a, a change of basis. Yep. Whereas with mixtures, you cannot do this. Um, let's get this there. Okay, and in fact, this is one way. So there's, there's some work in foundations of quantum theory where we don't want to assume anything about the formalism. So you don't want to assume that, it's, that states are represented by uh, vectors in Hilbert spaces. But you still want to have this notion of what is a pure state and what's a probabilistic mixture. And this kind of property is one of the ways we can define what a pure state is. It's something that there is a measurement um, that you can make that will always give out the same outcome with probability one. Okay. So now let's look at, we looked at superposition versus mixtures and now let's look at entanglement versus mixtures. And let's just recap what we did in the last lecture. We talked a bit about uh, the partial trace. Which was a way if we have some joint state, rho AB of two systems, Alice and Bob system, and we want to see what, what information does Alice have about the state. So what is her local view of the state? We saw that there's this uh, operation called the partial trace that gives us Alice's reduced state. That's the name, because you have reduced information. Good, and this thing is called the partial trace. And we saw that it's essentially like doing nothing on the first system and taking the trace on the second system. And I'll just write here the definition for completeness. So this was the sum over J being some basis elements of doing nothing on the system. And acting on the second one, there you go. So where JB was some orthonormal basis. Okay. And then we saw two things. We saw how do we model local 
um, measurements in local uh, evolutions. So local measurements by which we meant something of the sort where the projectors of the sort um, by X correspond to some outcome X on A and doing nothing on B or the observable corresponding to this on AB is the sum on I, uh, sorry, on X of the label for each outcome and then by X on A times the identity on B, right? And we saw that, well, we can do two things. So if you want, we start with the joint state and we want to end up with the, the probability of getting some outcome X on the subsystem A. We saw that either we can first take the partial trace over B, so you get row A, and then it, this probability is just given by the trace of by X A row A. Or the other way we did it was to say, well, we can take the trace of the whole thing by X A times identity on B row A B. And this gives the same outcome, right? So you can go one way or the other. And you know, usually going this way is simpler. But for example, if Roy B is a pure state, then it might be easier to compute um, this thing on the pure state than, than to compute first the reduced state and then this. And we saw that local evolution. by which I mean that there's some joint state, row AB, and then there's some evolution represented by local unitaries. And this will give me some final state, right? We saw again that there's two ways of, of going about this. So either we start with row AB, we want to end up with, um, we, we're only interested in what's happening to Alice. So we could either first take the partial trace over B, to get row A and then evolve just Alice, or we can evolve everything UA dagger times UB dagger. So we get this evolved state on A and B, and then take the partial trace over Bob to get the evolved state on Alice, right? And again, this diagram only commutes, meaning you can only go one way or the other and get to the same point if the evolution really is, um, is local. Okay. So now I want to give you an example to show you how entanglement, like global entanglement relates to local mixtures. So we're going to see three different states. So first, we're going to have row one of AB. This is not the, the row to the power of one, it's just row one. Oh, let's just call it row. And then I get row prime and row double prime. Row AB, this is going to be an entangled state. So we have psi AB being a bell state, which means this one in particular. Okay, on Alice and Bob, Alice and Bob. There's a tensor product here in the middle. And I will abbreviate this because we'll get many, many terms and you don't want to write them all the time. With all this cats and bras and things, I can write it like this, okay? Uh, so just to, just to remind ourselves, what does this state correspond to? It corresponds to this vector, one, zero, zero, one, because this is the component corresponding to zero, zero, here you get zero, one, here you get one, zero, and this would be one, one, right? And this is a sum of, up, of this term and that term. Okay, so when you have, 
Rui B. Then you get this thing times itself as a, in the bra form. You're going to get four terms. So I'll just write them like this. It's 0, 0, 0, 0. Then you get 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 1, 1 again. Okay, and let's just write the matrix is going to look like this one, K okay, has four ones in each corner. We just write the matrix so that later we can compare it to others. So what's the reduced state on, on Alice? That's taking the partial trace of B of Roy B. And we can leave as homework to do it yourselves. I'll give you the answer now. Okay. So, um, Ah, don't worry, I'll, I'll write down just one step towards the answer. And then I'll give you the answer, okay. And here is going to come that thing, and here again. Identity on A, tensor J on B. Okay, and let's take this whole thing and put it there. Uh-huh. Is this still away coming? Hmm. Let's put this here. Plus this two there. Okay. So one thing you can see is that because we're kind of sandwiching with this J, the only terms that will survive are the ones where the, the element on the second subsystem is the same for the cat and the bra. So this one survives because when j is zero, um, this, this two inner products are one. But this one, the second one will go away because when j is zero, you get a zero here. You get inner product one on this side and inner product one, a zero on the other. And when j is one, it's the other way around. So this one will also go away and this one will survive when when j is one so overall now you can do it at home to to do it carefully what you end up with is this okay so one over two a fully mixed state on on a good and now let's see a second example Okay, so first, the first, the first insight here is that, okay, so if we have a, an entangled state globally, then locally we get a mixed state, not a pure state, which uh, we already knew from the definition of, of, um, of entangled states that cannot be the product of pure states, right? But this is a more uh, drastic way of saying. So let's call this, this is the entangled state. Now let's look at another case. Uh, this is number one. Number two, we're going to look at row AB being one half of zero, 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 plus one half of one, 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 one. Okay. It's like there's a, a probability mixture of being both zero or both one. Okay. So I don't know why, it came out to be this way, but either someone gave me and Bob both a, a quantum system in state zero, or they gave us both a quantum system in state one. Okay. So this is one half, and the matrix is going to be zero, 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 one. So we lose this off diagonal terms. And this is what we call classical correlations. Now look again that row A is going to be the trace of, um, it's going to be again the trace B of row 
a b prime plus b of rho a b prime okay which is going to be we just do the same thing here these two terms don't don't exist because the matrix was just this plus this right this plus that but it's it's the same because those terms were cancelled anyway so the result we'll get is going to be again one half of zero zero plus one one to add in to it, which tells us what? Well, these two states are indistinguishable at the local level, which means that Alice, through local measurements uh, and operations, if she never talks to Bob, then she will not um, she will not be able to distinguish if they were classically correlated or if they were entangled. But even more dramatic is that I can give you another state, rho a b tech, which is just going to be rho a times rho b, where they are both identical. So 1 over 2 identity on a times 1 over 2 identity on b. So this is the matrix 1 over 4, 1, 1, 1, 1, zeros everywhere else, right? Because it's just 1 over 4 identity a b. And this is the case where the two systems are uncorrelated. So you just have like, Local. And correlated mixtures. And also in this case, if you look at the reduced state on on Alice, it's going to be exactly the same. Okay, so we can do this calculation. So this was row A check, and this is row A check check. So, rho a check check, trace b of rho a times rho b. And in every case that is like this, that you have a product of tensor products, uh, so sorry, if you have tensor products of local states, then when you take the partial trace, you just recover rho a. Okay, so you get one over two identity on it. So you can do this calculation and we'll have an exercise in the tutorials to to tell you that this is the case. Okay. So we have three states that are very different at the global level, but locally they look the same. And the way we built the states, they're symmetric, so the, the marginals, marginal is another way of saying the reduced state. So the reduced state on Bob is the same as the reduced state on Alice, they're going to look exactly the same. So how do we distinguish them? So Alice and Bob cannot distinguish them just by local operations, they need to talk to each other or they need to apply a global operation. But usually it's easier to, to talk to each other on the phone than to apply a global uh, unitary or global measurement. So here's an example. So let's take the entangled case. And this will be an exercise you'll do. The classical correlations and the local mixtures. Okay, so this was rho AB, this was rho prime AB, and this was rho tac tac AB. And here's some things that they can do. So they can measure in the basis Z, Z. So Alice measures in the Z basis, Bob measures in the Z basis, but then they talk about their outcomes. So they, they try to find correlations between their outcomes. Or they measure in the X basis, or they do a global measurement in the Bell basis, which you'll see what it is in the tutorial. And what you'll see is very, very similar to what uh, we saw in the beginning when we had only one system, but we also had um, superpositions or mixtures. So in the first case, so what I'll write here in the little cells are the possible outcomes. Okay, so the possible outcomes of ZZ is either they will both get zero or they'll both get one in the entangled case. In the case of classical correlations, if you look at the state, Mm, where is it? There it is. 
it's this stage. Again, it's zero, zero, or one, one. So you'll do this exercise and you'll see that it's zero, zero, or one, one. Yep. In the case of lo local mixtures, well, each of them locally is a mixture of zero and one, and they're not correlated at all between them. So you can, on each of them, you can get zero, one, uh, with equal probabilities, so you can actually overall can get zero zero or zero one or one zero or one one. So if you just measure this state in the ZZ basis, you can already rule out if you're in this case or not. Okay? But you still cannot distinguish these two cases of being entangled or classical correlations. But that's okay, because then you measure in the X basis locally. And here you get this, or minus minus. But in the case of classical correlations, what you'll see is that you can get uh, any of the four possibilities. Uh, so this would be minus plus. Or minus minus. Copy, and in this case, it's again the same. In the case of the local mixtures. Yeah, so by measuring, suppose you have many copies of this state that you don't know what it is. By measuring in the Z basis, you can distinguish these two cases from that. By measuring in the X basis, you can distinguish this state from those two. Yeah. By doing global measurement in the Bell basis, you can immediately distinguish uh, this case where you can only get one outcome from the other two. So you'll see this in the in the tutorial, we'll explore this a little bit more. But the key idea is that these were not just local operations, because if you're just on Alice's side, right, if she never talks to Bob, then in both cases, here she can get zero one, here she can get zero one, here she can get uh, zero on top or one at the bottom with equal probabilities. And here the same, plus, minus, plus, or minus, plus, or minus. Plus, or minus, plus, or minus, plus, or minus. So Alice alone cannot distinguish the two situations. But if she talks to Bob and they start correlating their outcomes, then uh, they can indeed. Uh, I'll just write here what the outcomes will be. you'll do this in exercise class. Okay. Then she can distinguish them. Okay, so this is it for um, examples of superpositions and mixtures. And we'll see in the next lecture how now to model uncertainty about the evolution itself. But before this, I'll take just a couple of minutes to talk about the spring semester. So there's a bunch of courses that you can take. So I think you could take any of them after this course. So the first one is QIP1. That's kind of quantum computing. So it will be about quantum algorithms and quantum error correction. So you could take it even if you had not taken this present course, but you can take it anyway. Uh, there's QIP2. So this is implementations. So this will be like, oh, we want to build a quantum computer. How do we actually implement it in the lab? How does it work in superconducting qubits? How does it work for ion traps? How does it work for optical systems, etc.? So it's more physics. Uh, so it's a good segue between uh, after, after this course that you're taking now. So there's quantum mechanics two, which is a continuation of quantum mechanics one. So it, it works well as a continuation of this course, but again, the approach is a bit less information theory. And the main thing is that you have, uh, in quantum mechanics one, they do just one particle, and quantum mechanics two, we do many particles. So things like bosons, fermions, and then perturbation theory, things with more applications. Then we are going to have a course called Advanced Topics in QIT, in quantum information theory, where we will talk about the fun stuff. So we'll talk about quantum thermal, 
dynamics. We'll talk about building quantum systems that act as clocks, uh, and we'll talk about foundations of quantum theory. And finally, there will be another course on quantum sensing and metrology, which is, again, one of the big applications of quantum physics at the moment. So it's not quantum computing, but it's, again, how to make uh, better sensors and how can we use quantum systems to measure things. Like we saw some examples in the scattering or the double slit, for example, and this will get really into depth into all of these things. Good, so with all this, I could still give a second course on, which would be a follow-up of this, uh, which would be maybe similar to quantum mechanics too, but um, I try to make it um, more information theory, theoretical driven and um, touch on topics that are more interesting to me, but they don't overlap much uh, with the others. Uh, I will ask you in the survey that we'll send out either today or tomorrow, I will ask you if there's interest for such a thing. I also don't know in what language quantum mechanics 2 will be. It might be that it's in German this year. All right. So you'll see. Okay, so that's all for today. And now I will see you again on Tuesday. So have a good weekend. <laughs>